Hello and thank you very much for watching this, which I hope is going to be the first in potentially a three-part series where I show you a really fantastic trip I recently took through Canada, uh, starting in Toronto and then taking the train all the way across the continent to Vancouver. So, without further ado and without wishing to delay proceedings any further, please do enjoy this video. Join me at 30,000 feet, I think 40,000 feet, um, as we are most of the way across the Atlantic, just about to hit the North American continent now. Um, so, almost, well, getting towards our destination of Toronto, um, flying in Club World, British Airways. Um, so, this is my little private cabin here. Um, such as it is um, and yeah we've had a very pleasant flight so far plenty of champagne to keep me going and very much looking forward to touching down in I think about three and just under three and a half hours three hours 15 minutes now um, we'll be touching down in Toronto we'll be going to our hotel the Fairmont Royal York checking in and to the extent I've still got any energy left at that point, hopefully having caught a few uh, a few winks on the plane, um, we'll be able to get out and see a bit of Toronto today, tonight. Uh, we'll be arriving kind of mid-afternoon, so hopefully that'll be doable. And yeah, the city is our oyster, but we're there for uh, seven days before we catch the train over to Vancouver so lots to do lots to see looking forward to it and uh, I'll bring you with me I've got to say this has been one of the most relaxed uh, and relaxing flights I've taken in my life which is a good job as I am exceptionally tired having worked a long day yesterday Today's a Saturday, I worked a long day on Friday um, and also had a dinner with some university friends in the evening which kept me out late and then had to leave the house this morning very early. Um, we tried to leave at 7am, um, woke up at like 5.30. So yeah, it's been a bit of a packed schedule but enjoying it, having fun. and. Um, yeah, I'll show you some of the some of the food I had earlier on board this lovely flight, um, and I'm sure I'll show you some of the other sights and sounds, um, and then hopefully we'll crack on with footage taken in and around Toronto and then on to Vancouver. Cheers. On arriving in Toronto, we made our way hastily to our hotel, the Fairmont Royal York, an imposing but beautiful building which was briefly the tallest in the British Empire and which has since been the residence of choice for the royal family when visiting this most important part of the Commonwealth. Having settled in, we then made our way over to the harbour area, um, which felt like a natural place to start exploring Toronto. So the area you're watching me walk down now is nothing particularly special, uh, other than in the sense that the whole of Toronto is fairly special. Um, it's just a stretch of promenade along the harbour front um, with a view out over to the Toronto Islands, which again are, are featured in this video um, and, and will be shown to you soon. So um, this is but a teaser for the excitement that is to come from that section of the video. But yes, you'll see that uh, it, was a, it was a fairly nice day when we arrived. Um, relatively good weather, not as good as it would be when we eventually got over to the Toronto Islands. And here you can see me just walking along, seeing some of the sights on a fairly pleasant day on the harbour front, looking up at the CN Tower, which again will feature in this video uh, in far more 
prominent a role than it is here, not that it's not prominent whenever you're looking at it. Anyway, enough rambling from me, I'll leave you to enjoy these shots. One interesting tidbit about the Toronto Islands that we won't cover when we visit the islands but which you can see here is that the islands actually have an active airport on them, uh, Billy Bishop Airport, which I think mostly handles freight and similar kind of smaller planes but I think there are some passenger flights. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. And uh, having walked around the harbour front and the lovely shoreline of Toronto we then made our way over to a district called the distillery district which will feature a few more times in this video um, as we knew it was going to be from what we'd read about Toronto um, and it certainly turned out to be one of the better areas to spend time uh, and kind of unwind whilst in the city so please do enjoy seeing some clips of that. What can I tell you about the distillery district? This is probably the premier location in Toronto for restaurants, bars and craft shops, all housed in attractive historic buildings. The site's distinctive brown brick lots date back to 1832, positively ancient by Canadian standards, even if that is somewhat modern by European standards. It was then that the Goodaham and Wart distillery, the namesake of the district, established the site. And since then, the site has ceased to be used for large-scale production of alcohol, although the Mill Street Brew microbrewery and brew pub remains, which I would recommend a visit to. Reportedly, the developers of the site decline requests from any chain establishment to lease with them, resulting in the presence of a refreshing mix of independent shops, restaurants, bars, galleries, chocolatiers and the like. As a result of everything I've just explained, this was somewhere that we tried to come back to and did come back to a few times during our time in Toronto, so don't be surprised if you see it popping up in, in future footage, as in footage to come in the next few minutes of this video, however long it is. Um, but uh, as you can see here, you can see the Goodham and Warts Limited sign showing the provenance and the heritage of the site. Um, and I really like that it retained that distinctive character, the, the elements that made the site original were retained despite the new use. Um, so it's a very aesthetically attractive site and yes, a lovely place to while away a few hours if you find yourself in Toronto without an agenda.
The next day it was time for us to visit the Toronto Islands. These are a small archipelago just off the Toronto harbour front in Lake Ontario. Fortunately it was a very sunny day for our trip which did no harm to the excellent views over the Toronto skyline. The journey itself is just a 10 minute or so ferry ride from the Jack Layton ferry terminal. While we were there, the ferry was only running towards Ireland, so we trekked over to Centre Island, although understandably given it was out of season, there was not a great deal going on there. Nevertheless, we enjoyed the views and the unique atmosphere of the islands, which seemed like they would be an even better place to explore in summer. Next on our sightseeing list was Niagara Falls. What can I add to what you will surely already know about this, the most famous set of waterfalls on Earth? These three falls date from the Ice Age, and the largest of the falls is the most powerful waterfall on the North American continent. Visiting the site, one thing you may be struck by is how close the United States is. Buffalo, New York is much closer than Toronto, though it was hardly a long journey from Toronto. That journey for us, by the way, was um, between two and a half hours to three hours, consisting of a train journey from Union Station, Toronto, which was obviously very convenient as it's just opposite the Fairmont Royal York, to Burlington GO Station, uh, from whence you get a bus to Niagara Falls bus station, um, and then walk up a fair way, actually, to the falls themselves. So. A little bit of a, a journey, but nothing to put you off seeing, you know, one of the most famous sites on Earth.
Well, hello there. I'm at Niagara Falls, just by the bit where the actual waterfall or one of the waterfalls begins. Um, this is one of the most exciting, most important things we're seeing during our time in Canada. Um, Got to say, we thought that we thought the weather would be better, but at least we haven't got too much rain. There seem to be localized rain clouds that form right at the top here by the actual waterfall. Um, but until now, we, we had not had any rain today, which I think made the experience more bearable. Um, but it's a very picturesque area, a lot of natural beauty, um, of course, obviously, and um, a lot to photograph and get video of, which hopefully you've seen uh, during some of the footage that I'll show you during this video. Um, anyway, yeah, there we go. There is Niagara Falls falling. Um, and now I'm gonna go because otherwise my lens is going to be ruined by the uh, either rain or falling sprit spit from the, uh, from the waterfall. We don't know which, but um, either way it's water and it's not good for cameras. So I'm gonna go now. Well, you join me now from inside or, or very close to inside Niagara Falls, um, just behind a bit of the waterfall and looking out on, as you can see, the rest of it. This is the Horseshoe Waterfall I've since learned, um, as in since the last piece to camera I recorded. Um, so this is the Horseshoe Waterfall and there's another waterfall over there. Um, but yeah, um, pretty incredible scenery behind me. So this is the uh, journey behind the falls experience at Niagara Falls. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, we've only got half an hour to experience this, but I think that's enough. Um, now out on the observation platform, um, which is definitely the main attraction. And so, from this watery diversion, we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past, to borrow a line from Fitzgerald, who I was reading on this trip. The past, in present context, being only just over 45 years ago, if we are going by the completion date for our next attraction, the CN Tower. Easily one of Toronto's most instantly recognisable and world-renowned sites. Until 2007, this was the world's tallest freestanding structure, and it is one of the American Society of Civil Engineers' seven wonders of the modern world. Enjoy. Hello, welcome to the top of the CN Tower. Um, here, having paid for the privilege of coming up to the top so I can walk around and see the sights. So we're here at the top of the CN Tower, as I say, um, taking in the sights. You can see for miles. I'm sure it would be somewhat nicer if it was a sunny day, but it's pretty nice as it is. This is one of the kind of tourist trap things that, you know, I feel like I had to do when I came to Toronto. As you can see, the sprawl of Toronto continues for, I would say, several miles um, out that way. 
So now we're looking towards the city, inwards, uh, to land. And as I walk around now, um, you'll see more of Lake Ontario. So there we go, now I feel like I, I won't be visible once I point the camera at the lake because it's a bit brighter out there. So that is Lake Ontario. Um, and you can see the islands which we were on a few days ago and which I'll hopefully have shown you some footage of. Uh, you can see Billy Bishop Airport, which is the airport on the island. I don't know if that will be in focus there, but you can just about see the airport. No, I did real. We actually did come here. We did come here. We made the effort that there we go, now you can see some more of the islands, uh, Billy Bush Airport as I said. Now we move around, seeing again the islands in the background, let me just zoom you out a bit. You can see the islands curving around. On this observation deck, which is called the Sky Dome, um, which is slightly higher than the normal standard observation deck, um, the viewing kind of panels aren't quite as helpful, I would say. Well, hello there. You join me uh, on our last proper day in Toronto. We've seen the sights. Uh, we've seen the islands, the distillery district. We've be even been out on a trip to Niagara Falls. I feel like we've done much of what uh, this city has to offer for us at the current time. Um, obviously, with a place as big as this, you never see all of it in one trip. But uh, we've had a fantastic time, first few days here, and uh, tomorrow morning we'll be getting the train to Vancouver, which promises to be its own adventure. I think we should have some absolutely incredible sights as we travel across the continent to Vancouver. But uh, obviously I'll be, I'll be bringing you on that journey. So um, this, whilst it's the end of the first phase of our stay in Canada, is by no means the end of the trip. So um, yes, I look forward to bringing you along. 
this is, by the way, our room at the Fairmont Royal York. Um, I hope, hope you like it. We've certainly enjoyed it. Um, sites over the financial district of Toronto. Um, what are we going to do with the rest of our day today? Um, I've just watched the Formula One qualifying, found a bar that was playing uh, the Sky Sports coverage and, and managed to watch it with, uh, with some radio coverage on my headphones as well. And uh, we're now going to, I think, go to the distillery district again. Um, hopefully a bit livelier on a Saturday night than uh, when we went before, which I think was a Monday or a Tuesday night. So yeah, um, still plenty of fun ahead for us here in Toronto and then plenty of fun ahead in Vancouver as well. But the train journey is going to be a, a four day gap between those two places. So um, looking forward to that. Anyway, yeah, thank you for sticking with us and um, enjoy the further footage which I am doubtless about to show you. So highlights of uh, the first leg of our trip here to Toronto. I suppose uh, the restaurants that we've been able to enjoy, so we've been to two high-end tasting menu restaurants, uh, Canoe and Allo, uh, both I think fairly highly regarded amongst Canadian restaurants. So those were absolutely excellent, um, really, really tasty as you would expect. Um, we also managed to dine last night actually at the University Club of Toronto, that's uh, a private members club that I'm able to access through my membership of a London club. And um, what else? Well, we've seen two different comedy clubs. Uh, so we've been to kind of live comedy at two, two of the clubs here in Toronto. Uh, those, I think the first was called the Comedy Bar and the second was called Yuck Yucks. I think Yuck Yucks is probably the leading one here in Toronto. Um, so we saw a few stand-up comics there last night. Uh, as I say, we've also been to the Toronto Islands, which provided an absolutely incredible view over the city skyline. And we also went to Niagara Falls. That was a bit of a journey, um, roughly two and a half to three hours uh, train and then bus to get there, but really worth it. Uh, of course, one of the kind of natural wonders of the world that you couldn't come to this part of the world without seeing. So yeah, really fantastic first leg of this trip so far. It's been incredible um, and I'm sure it's only going to get better. So yeah, please do enjoy some of the footage we've assembled of those various things that I just mentioned. And um, yeah, see you soon. Welcome to my bedroom while I've been in Toronto. Um, thought I'd just talk to you a bit about the various neighbourhoods that we've seen uh, on our walks through the actual city of Toronto. So we've seen Kensington Market, which is a kind of eclectic uh, mix of different shops and restaurants and um, bars, that kind of thing. Um, I suppose we were talking about it and we think probably the closest analogy in London is probably Camden, uh, but it is very different uh, and it's you know, kind of artsy neighborhood, um, a bit, you know, kind of out of the way from the proper, you know, city center, but yeah, really nice to look around. Um, and we've also seen the distillery district, which is probably, you know, if you Google places to go in Toronto, it's definitely one of the first places that would pop up on your list. Um, certainly worth a visit, absolutely uh, got some incredible things, incredible bars, incredible shops. Um, and all in a very kind of aesthetically really well done, uh, presented, really well presented way. Um, so yeah, that's a really beautiful part of the, of the city and I would wholeheartedly recommend to anyone who is visiting. Um, yeah, and hopefully we're gonna find more of that kind of thing uh, in the coming days. So yeah, stay tuned. I don't know why I can't get you out of my mind Well hello, I'm speaking to you from a lovely little French 
um, I think it calls itself a bistro and boulangerie in the distillery district. Uh, we've just eaten, I had a foie poutine, which is basically poutine with foie gras on top. Absolutely delicious. Um, and several very nice cocktails. Uh, just serves to underline how nice a venue the distillery district in general is. Um, and yeah, I won't uh, embarrass myself any further by recording much more here, but um, yeah, just thought I'd say hello from the Cluny Bistro et Boulangerie in the district, the distillery district of Toronto. Cheers! Bye! Great! Thank you very much! If I find a way to get it when I do it, I can live it and forget it. Cause I hate how much I love you, or I hate how you just put me in my feelings. I just wish you understood the gravity, but you got low sinners. I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember. Cheers! I, this is still me in the Clooney. Bistro et Boulangerie avec un cocktail, un old fashioned. Merci beaucoup, au revoir, c'est bon, aujourd'hui, au revoir. Merci beaucoup, au revoir. Thank I've been wasting my time I don't know why I can't get you out of my mind And if I find a way to get it when I do it I can live it and forget it Cause I hate how much I love you or I hate how you just put me in my feelings I just wish you understood the gravity but you got low sinners I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember I've been wasting my time I don't know why I can't get you out my mind Yeah, now I'm so lost, where do I go? I was in a chase, caught a flat on road It was all love, X no O I was feeling